Hey guys, how's it going? It's right here. So today I've got a video for you, and it's not actually on a hero. It is on a map, and that map is Tomb of the Spider Queen. It is one of my favorite maps, and the reason for that is because I love the rotations going on in this map. So you hear the word rotations, and you might not know what I'm talking about, but that is what today's video is for. I want to talk about rotations, solo lanes, team comps, how to push and defend versus the web weaver pushes, mercenary camps, and the boss. So I have a replay here to help illustrate those things, and this is from a tournament. It's not the highest level game, but I think it's good enough to kind of help you understand what I'm talking about. So let's see. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Three maps, and where do you go? Well, you want to rotate mid-top on Tomb of the Spider Queen. So as you can see, the lanes are very direct and very short. So if you look at mid-bottom here, it's a little bit more of an alley. It's kind of less safe to rotate here and especially because of these chokes and the lack of vision in the bushes than rotating between top mid so for that reason you want to rotate top mid on this map as four and then have a solo lane bot the solo lane essentially never leaves and the four man always stays together well almost always sometimes if you're ahead in rotations which we'll get to in a minute uh, you can send one or two people, or maybe even the whole team, and look for a gank on bot lane or in a bush somewhere, or look for an ambush. So there's a number of advantages to rotating as four. Um, the main advantage is it's safe. So if you're with four, you're three other people, it is less likely to die. And you're also more likely to secure kills, because if they're alone, then you have the rest of your team with you. It also allows you to change CC and stuns and damage to look for a lot easier kills and say if i'm johanna here and i'm running around i'm never gonna get kills alone i need the help of my allies but at the same time they need the help of me because i can peel for them or i can engage or i can wave clear without fear of repercussions so before i go into rotations exactly i just want to talk about comps so wave clear is very very important on this map and that's that's for two reasons one you want to push out the lanes as fast as possible and with as, as much efficiency as you can, and you also want wave clear to help defend versus web weavers, and it helps to push with them as well. So if they have a big push, it's going to help to have KT who can wave clear very easily. Uh, he can throw Phoenix out, and he can use his flame strike to decimate the waves. So as you'll see here, uh, we rotate as four. So the four man is Johanna, Kilthos, Tychus, Malfurion. So Johanna, KT just by themselves have enough wave clear between them, especially since uh, Johanna will condemn them and pull them in for KT's flame strike, and just them two have enough wave clear for the team. But you also have Malfurion, and who has quite good wave clear for support, and you have Tychus, who has very very strong single target damage. So Tychus isn't too intricate to this comp, but the reason he fits quite well is because you have Johanna, who can condemn into KT stun, who can stun for a Malfurion root, which gives Tychus a lot of time to get damage in. So that means that it makes it very difficult for their front line, who is ETC, to step up. So when we start the game here, you'll see that we just move together as four, or as five, sorry. So once the game starts, um, our bot lane, Alarak, does not need to immediately go bottom. Because the waves don't hit, uh, there's nothing for him, he'll be missing nothing, so there's no reason for him to go bot, he can stay with us, and if they if they look to fight us, then we'll have uh, our whole team here. I actually just face checked this bush for no reason, I don't die, but I do get chunked out. So what I want to show you here is that the wave, so when we pause, so the wave is actually a little bit body blocked here, but it would hit here. And you can see that even though mid is already hitting, top has not yet hit, and bottom is not even close to hitting. So this is why rotations work, because of this. The fact that the lane middle is shorter in distance between the two cores than top and bottom. So this difference in timing between the minion waves gives time to do what we call rotations, which is basically rotating mid and top as four. So once I actually get here, I will clear it. KT will clear it, and it's already done. And ETC is here stuck clearing. So what this does is ETC cannot leave this wave because early game minions are so important for your team. Uh, just one wave of minions is about equal to a kill or maybe even more. So even if, if blue team gets a kill on us, if they leave 
these minions here, they'll actually be even or down. And what this does is, because we've already cleared up mid, we don't need anyone middle. So our whole team can roam top, because they're trying to clear top here. We can actually find a kill with small green root, and uh, they don't have an ETC to defend, because ETC was clearing mid. Now they should have had Lunara mid, and they should have had Jaina, Ariel, ETC clearing top, but that's not what happened for the team. Um, I also want, just before we, we talk about a bit more rotations, I want to talk about team comp. So on this map, as I said, wave clear is always important, but you can also go for a kill comp. So that would be like ETC, Taronda, um, Vala, and Jaina, for example. So Jaina, although she can clear the waves very effectively, if she, when she clears the wave with Blizzard, uh, she won't be able to really do any anything to the enemy team because that's her only threat. KT can flame strike and he can still stun and use his uh, chain bomb for damage. But when Jenna uses her Blizzard, that's basically her entire kit. So um, Jenna is a, a little bit less effective on this map. It's kind of a, a side note. Um, but so if you have a kill comp like an ETC Toronto comp. Um, Instead of looking for wave clear, you can just look for kills. Because if the enemy team is too scared of dying, then they won't be able to wave clear. So if you're playing ETC here, and the enemy team, and the blue team here is a lot more threatening, so they have like Toronto, Vala, Jaina, as I said, then they can constantly look for picks, and us as the red team have to play very carefully, and therefore we won't be able to clear it as effectively. Um, so that's one style you can do. Um, you can also, you don't always have to, to rotate as four. Like if the enemy team... Like, blue team here cannot match our four-man rotations. Um, every time they try to match us, we out-trade them for damage, and they aren't able to clear the waves. So it's in their best interest to just leave someone top, maybe leave someone mid, and just have, like, an ETC Jaina roam or something like that. Where Because they're never going to win rotations, so they should look for ganks across the map, maybe look for Alarak ganks bottom. Um, but whatever they're going to do, them rotating as four will not work because our four man rotations are stronger than their four man rotations. So basically, by having an advantageous four man, it forces the enemy team to react to you. Because if they just keep trying to match us and we and they can never clear before we can, that gives us an advantage. You can see how fast we clear this. Um, so they're stuck clearing here. And we go top to clear it. So by clearing quickly, um, this does a number of things for us. This allows us to be elsewhere on the map. So we know that the enemy team has to go and catch this wave of minions here. But we, the red team, could be anywhere on the map because we already cleared the, the wave. So that means that we could be looking for a gank bot, we could sit in a bush and look for an ambush, or we can turn on our gems, or we can do all three, um, send people different places on the map. So we know that they're going to go top. And if you look at vision here, we have basically total vision of their team. We just saw them clear top, and we know that their thrall is bottom. Um, so the only person we don't know who, who that person might be is Lunara. And blue team has absolutely no idea where we are as, as our four men. So we're just sitting in this bush, and if they checked it, then they could be in trouble. So early game, you know, like level two here, like one minute in, this isn't very important. But as the game progresses and it gets later and later into the game, Having a lot of people MIA on the map is a lot more dangerous, especially once these towers start falling um, and you start nearing level 10. Then it becomes a lot more dangerous because the protection that these towers offer is no longer there and the vision and control. Because these towers actually give control to all the way where my mouse cursor is, so all the way like a third up the lane. Once these towers are gone, only the fort offers protection. So this protection is removed all the way back to here. That's quite significant for a lane that's so short. So we're going to continue to rotate. And you'll see that they start getting desperate because they keep losing rotations. This gives us an advantage in push and it gives us free turn-ins um, because they can't they can't prevent our turn-ins because we're constantly uh, clearing the waves so they have to get the waves. Um, so we clear and it, you'll see that they'll start getting desperate because they know that they have to make something happen. If they don't try to make something happen, then they're just going to be fall further and further behind. So again, they're stuck clearing. Uh, what they're doing here is actually quite good, though. They're Instead of letting the minions hit the wall, they're clearing them before. So that prevents their towers from losing any ammo. Because they're not actually very... They're not low here at all. Jane is a little bit low on mana, but they're not low on health. So they're perfectly fine to be able to do that. What we should be doing here is instead of letting them clear, we should go play up and prevent them from clearing that. So I haven't really discussed about bot lane at all, and 
bot lane is a solo lane, as I said before. And what this means is that aside from ganks, it's really just going to be two heroes facing off each on against each other. Um, Alarak is one of the best laners in the game, if not the best laner. However, Thrall does have an advantage, a slight advantage over him if he goes block. Now this Thrall didn't go block, so Alarak does have an advantage in this lane, but it's still quite difficult for Thrall to win this. Uh, the, the strength, the importance of a good solo laner is that, let's say that they have a Vala bot, okay, instead of a Thrall. Alarak will demolish the Vala. Uh, Vala cannot win that lane. So what's going to happen is that he's either going to get multiple kills or prevent Vala from getting any soak, or he's just going to push it into her towers and she's going to lose towers. So in any one of those circumstances, it's bad for Vala, especially if Alarak gets any type of gank. And once he has the upper hand, it's very, very hard for Vala to get um, back in the game. And notice that Vala also has no sustain. So good soul laners are heroes with either strong globals or very good wave clear or a lot of sustain so like the haka chen alarak thrall faustad is decent etc those are those are heroes that are, are good to solo so having a strong solo means that you control the bottom half of the map which is important this map is one of the most important maps in the game to have a strong solo on because if you're Let's say our Alarak is crushing this lane. It's about even right now. But let's say he's crushing this lane. This means that he's able to turn in whenever he wants. He's able to roam mid top. And he's probably going to be pushing towers in. This removes a lot of control and vision for the team that's being pushed in. Because, I mean, you have four people controlling two lanes. So if you have one person controlling one lane, you know, it, it's, it's very important that they're able to do that. So his job isn't to get kills bot lane, it's just to basically not die and put as much pressure as he can. So as you can see now, uh, I think it's here, maybe it's later, they start getting desperate for kills. So they know they have to make something happen. And they actually try and go in for a kill onto uh, Malfurion. But since we have Tychus and we have so much CC, he gets CC locked and he, he just dies. Now they don't, I don't believe they lose any gems here. Uh, they actually might lose gems. No, nope, they don't. Uh, but what this does is it, it creates a lot of pressure, and now they have one person dead, so it makes everything exponentially worse for them. Uh, something else I want to touch on here is that see how the we're, we're already top lane, so that another lane is already hitting. We don't want to go mid right now to clear up mid. We just want to stay top, clear this out, and then we'll go mid. So once we go mid here, you'll see that it'll begin to hit. The next wave will begin to hit. And it'll be right on time. Uh, so the next wave will be coming in here. So we don't want to go back top. We just want to stay mid to clear this out. Uh, our Tychus also went bottom. So for the early game turn in, you're going to need your bot lane to turn in. Because there's three lanes and he's going to have one third of them. So you're definitely going to need your bot lane to turn in if you want to get the first turn in. So Tychus goes here to provide a gank. Uh, he doesn't get the kill, but it allows Alarak to turn in. Which is still obviously really good. Uh, the first turn on this map is what we're going to talk about next. So we get the turn in, which is in due part to ETC dying, because that allows us to turn in the rest of our gems top and allows Tychus to roam bot and kill or to pressure the Thrall. And what we want to do here is we want to have three lane match to the Web Weavers. You can see that when the Web Weavers come out, we don't just push mid with four. What we actually do is we go one, three, one. It doesn't have to be one through one in that order, so we don't have to have one top. What we want to do is we want to have our three man match their three man or their four man or whatever it is. So let's talk about a few scenarios. Okay, so if they put four top here and we have one person top, that means we're going to put push with three mid. They have no one mid, and then we have one, and it's a one v one bot. So this is under ideal circumstances as well. So bot will have a one v one, and it'll push into towers. Um, and the Thrall shouldn't be able to push up, shouldn't be able to clear the Web Weaver because then he'll get traded on by Alarak. So the Web Weaver should get free reign on the towers because Alarak is defending it. So Thrall can't, basically Thrall can't clear because Alarak will 1v1 him. In mid lane, there's no one to defend, so we get free push, um, but we probably won't get the fort because they'll clear top fast enough before we can do it. So we'll push with three, they'll miss a, a, a bit of soak, and they'll have cleared out top. So our one person top, say we have Tychus up here defending a 4, will do nothing. 
All he'll be able to do is is clear is soak the minions here. So our one man does nothing versus their four man, and basically they clear out top for free. We get the wall for free, and then they clear out top for free. And that's a bad trade for us because we should be getting more than a wall here. So if they're pushing as four, then we should be defending as three, and we should have one person mid. We want one person one person mid because they just one person is able to put a lot of push on the towers and on the fort. Uh, when we have a web we were pushing with it, and we get the minions that are killed. So the minions were still very early in the game, only four and a half minutes, so the minions are still worth a lot of experience relative to our level. So we don't want to miss out on that soak. At the same time, you might be thinking, well, it's a 4v3, isn't that a little dangerous? Yes, it is. But um, we want to keep pressuring them so they aren't able to clear it for free. They don't really have a lot of kill comp here. Uh, all they can do is get... If, if they get an ETC slide on any of our backline, our backline's going to die. But... Our backline shouldn't be in range of EDC, so I'll play up as the Johanna, and I have um, Unstoppable from my D, so I can play up, and I'm pretty much very difficult to kill, if not impossible for them to kill, if I play remotely well whatsoever. So that allows our team to somewhat defend top, while still pushing mid, and if they really commit on us top, it's going to take some time for them to kill us, especially if this were later into the game. But even now, it takes some time for them to kill us. So that means that they're 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 not clearing the web weaver, and they're not dealing with mid, and they're not dealing with bottom. So we go and match them. We only set two up here, but it's enough, and they're kind of scared, and they choose not to fight us. So we don't do the best lanes here, um, but we do have two mid, and we have two top. So once I leave top, you'll see that they have two top here as well. So this kind of helps illustrate my point. Tychus can't push in 1v2. Okay, a 3v4 can kind of push, but like a 1v2 will never be able to push. So Tychus can do no value here. He's not able to do anything. There's no minions up here. So him staying up here actually doesn't do anything because they have two. Aside from getting the soak. That's basically all here he is he's doing uh, top lane. Um, on the other hand, we've gotten mid because these two people can't defend versus three. Especially an ETC and an Ariel. They're two DP their two DPS heroes are top, so that makes it very hard for them to clear. So what you should be getting off the first web weaver is at least um, two fort towers. So what I mean by that is you should be able to get top fort towers and mid fort towers, and maybe even bot fort towers. Uh, a really good turn-in would be a, would be all the towers. Uh, an okay turn-in is getting two of the fort towers, and a really good like a, a really really good turn-in is getting a fort. And you, to get a fort, you'd have to get a kill. Um, but that would give you a level or two advantage and pretty much snowball the game because you'd be able to immediately turn in afterwards as well. So our Alarak actually dies bottom, which is bad and shouldn't happen, but it does uh, from time to time. Um, otherwise, we would have gotten this bot wall. So you can see that they clear here, and then it's done. So if you're defending, you want to have you, you want to mismatch your three men so you want to have three people clear the lane that they're defending as one and then if you're pushing you want to have your three men match their three men or their larger number you never want to let the larger number in the lane um clear for free if that makes sense you always want to have an even number as an enemy team in each lane it's basically how you want to look at it when you're pushing and when you're defending you want to have an odd number in each lane if that makes sense uh, before we go into anything else, I want to talk about Merc Camps. So Merc Camps are a little bit different on this map than pretty much any other map. Uh, on, on Sky Temple, for example, you take them on a specific time, same on Cursed Hollow. But on Tomb of the Spire Queen, there's never a specific time that you take them out. You basically just take them out when you can. And what that means is if you have really good push in a lane, or you got some kills, or you just have some time in between turn-ins, you want to go do the camp. Uh, so for bot lane, if your bot lane is winning really hard, you can send one person to go and help your bot lane do the ogres. And if you're winning rotations top or you get a kill or something, you can have you can send two people from rotation to do the camp. And then it leaves two people to um, both watch this watch mid and one person to watch top and to also watch the turn in. So also what I want to say is one if you have if you take out the Merc camp mid and the enemy team turns in, that nullifies the web weaver mid. And same for the bot ogres. So if you take bot ogres out it nullifies the bot web we return in for the enemy team. Uh, this is 
Only true, of course, if they're not pushing against it. But if they leave the Webweaver to push against one of the Merc Camps, the Merc Camp will clear it out essentially for free. This is also true for Catapults. So once we get one of their keeps down, the their turn-ins do nothing unless they push with them. Because the Catapults will clear them out for free. So the next thing I want to go over is... I want to skip to when we actually get level 10 and we push post 10. So basically what I talk about the entire game here is laning phase. And once you get level 10, uh, everything changes. And the reason for that is a few things, but mostly because the heroes are stronger in independently. So what you want to do is post 10 especially is you want to start grouping up. Um, so if all these forts were up, if they had a, a top fort up and a mid fort up and a bot fort up, then you probably want to split 4-1 because you'd have one person mid and you'd have four people top. And as long as you, you're watching for them engaging on you, you're probably fine. But once these forts die, it, it really reduces the amount of vision on the, on the map for both teams. Because if you're on red team here on the right side, you'll be pushed in a lot further, which is a lot easier to gank. And if you're blue team here, then you have nothing to watch for you. Um, so it really opens up the map, and that allows a lot more team fights to occur. So once you get post 10, you want to group up. So if we, if they have, they have etc. Right. So he's a global since he has stage dive. So he's perfectly fine to clear alone, and then he can rejoin their team, rejoin the team, or especially if we force a fight with stage dive. And so if you have a global, it's perfectly acceptable to have them solo, but you want to have most of the other heroes grouped. So what we do here is we push down the last remaining fort. And this is going to be really easy because they have to clear mid and they have to clear bottom. Uh, and they have to rotate all the way around here to clear top end. So by the time they actually get top, they can't really do anything. And this fort dies completely for free. So this web weaver is full health. Uh, and that's because they were trying to clear out mid and bottom. Now bot won't really get much here because it's so pushed in. So if you see that if the fort was right here, um, if that fort was available, then this web weaver will get some value. But since it has to walk all the way to their keep, the only thing it's going to do is build up a big wave on our side to push into them, which isn't going to happen for quite a bit. So mid lane here, we have a bit of a push going, and we want to group up mid here so that we can push with the web weaver, um, because this web weaver here doesn't really, um, won't be able to get too much value because of the, the wave, but it's also a lot closer to us than the bot lane. So that's why we wouldn't want to go bot here because it's too far. Um, and also, it's, it's a lot further away from the other web weaver, so that allows the enemy team to clear them while we walk bot. And this also makes it so that it's a lot harder for them to clear bot because it's so far away. But they do have ET, ETC with stage dive, so it makes it a little bit easier. So the reason we don't want to clear top here, or keep pushing top here, is because um, bottom and mid will be cleared for free. And we want to get the most value out of our push. So if we push top, we'll probably get maybe a wall top, whereas if we push mid, uh, we're able to force their whole team mid and we'll get a lot more value overall because bottom will push, top will push, and they can't react to those lanes. So we group up, group up here. We try to get Jaina, but she's just too far. And so we start pushing in. So the way we were is already about half health. We don't have the best push going here, but you can see that top is still pushing and then bot will eventually uh, create a big wave. So the important thing here that we're trying to do isn't get the keep. If we can get a kill, that's nice, but we're not looking for kills, we're not looking for keeps, we're not even looking for towers here. The only thing we're doing is creating pressure in this lane so that they can't clear the top or bottom lane. So if the top and bottom lane were a lot healthier and a lot more push in, this would be a lot more effective. But because it's still fairly early, early into the game and we didn't do the waves as effectively as we could, we don't get that much value here from the opposite lanes pushing. But if the other lanes are a little bit more healthy, we get a lot more value because the aiming team can't clear them. They're stuck here in mid. They're stuck defending mid because if they have four people here, like even just four people, we'll e easily be able to run through them um, as five with the web weaver push. So they, they are forced to come here and defend. Otherwise, we'll build pressure for keep. And they're not really under any threat here under to lose his keep, but they would be a little bit more so if they weren't grouped as uh, five. So the last thing I want to talk about here is the boss. So the boss on this map is obviously very strong if you're able to cap it and then get a turn in because you'll get a, a boss and a turn in push, which almost always guarantees a keep. But it, 
the other way that you can look at it is if you get a boss and the enemy team turns in, it effectively cancels the enemy team's turn in because they're forced to deal with the boss. The Webweaver top on their side will, uh, won't be able to push because the minions will be aggroed to the boss. And the enemy team has to send, you know, two or three people at least to deal with the boss. So that gives you the ability to just clear their web weavers out elsewhere on the map as four or five. So if you get the top boss here and they turn in, you'd immediately just go mid, clear mid out while they're clearing top, and then go clear bot out, and then you'd rotate back top, and they'd have a little bit of a push from the web weaver, but that's it. And it'd pretty much nullify their turn in. So that's an important thing to note uh, that I just wanted to get out to you guys. So I think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. If you have any comments or criticisms or things you'd like to do different in this video, let me know. And until next time, take it easy.